Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, this is the beginning of something new. What we're going to be trying to do is we're going to try and uncover recovery within the Torah itself. And each week in in unity with the light revealed, in connection with the light revealed, the project of the light revealed, we're going to attempt to uncover certain themes, certain notions of recovery as they emerge within the biblical text that we are reading in that week. Now, the reason for this is twofold. Number one, to ground our inner experience within the framework of the texts that give shape to our understandings of spirituality. And on the second level, to also open ourselves up to the possibility of realizing that while the diagnostic categories of addiction and all of the mental health symptoms that come along with it are a relatively modern invention, the experience and the emotional experiences and the philosophical tendencies that give birth to the process of addiction as well as to the process of recovery are ancient in their reality. They're as ancient as the Torah. And when we can uncover that subterranean thread of the addiction recovery spectrum that exists within the Torah itself, it will become far more comfortable for us to kind of move between rooms, to move between a 12-step meeting as well as a base medrash and from a base medrash to a 12-step meeting when we come to terms with the realization that there is so much shared territory to the point that most of it is almost aligned in absolute unity with what we're trying to do in Torah, with what we're trying to do in recovery. And what we're going to start with is Parshas Lech Lecha. We spoke about Lech Lecha last year in a shir for, for the light revealed, but we're going to focus on a different element right now. When it comes to Avraham Avinu, when it comes to the first individual who is tasked with owning that burden of what it means to be somebody who is called a Jew, when it comes to the forefather, when it comes to the archetype of Jewish faith, what we are first and foremost encountered with is a two-step process. Number one, Avram Avinu was the first iconoclast. Avram Avinu was the one who shattered idols. And number two, Avram Avinu was the one who was tasked with wandering and wondering without destination. Now, in spite of the fact that we can look at these two steps of the narrative as two separate stages of the story, nevertheless, it's my belief and the belief of many of our tzaddikim and teachers that these are two pulsations within a singular step. That at first glance, Avram Avinu is born in a world that worships idols. Idolatry, idol worship, is the desire to have something that can be weighed, measured, packaged, and identified in some formidable way of knowledge. As long as I know how much my higher power weighs, as long as I know how much my higher power is worth, as long as I know the exact definitions of it, then I can rest assured that I am in possession of my higher power. I have an ownership of it. I understand it, meaning to say I stand under it. I have a full acquisition of power and strength when it comes to relating to this invisible thing. And this natural human desire, this all too human desire to have things measured in a very specific measure oriented way is understandable because the human being is born into a state of confusion and disunity. And in the space of confusion and disunity, what emerges first and foremost is a sense of chaos and terror. And then comes the emotional responses, which are trauma response, anxiety response, et cetera, et cetera. So our entire human experience is on one level or another trying to create a formidable plan of action in response to the ultimate unknowability at the heart of everything we experience. And this growing anxiety, this growing fear that an individual individual experiences when they're forced to recognize that I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't know what the next moment will bring. I can't measure things in absolute certainty. I can't weigh them with absolute certainty. So to fight against the anxiety of that groundlessness and that instability, one will come to create very measured buildings for themselves, objects that ground them in a sense of security, because I know what this weighs. I know the certainty of this thing. This idol represents that. This certainty represents that. And it allows a person to rest assuredly in their self-created bubble of certainty, which helps numb the pain or the fear of uncertainty. Now, obviously, idolatry is expressive in our generation as well in terms of ideologies, but more significantly in terms of substantiality. The desire for ground to stand upon is the desire for substance. And it's not by chance that the word we use for drug is the same word we use for the same desire to grab hold of stability in our lives, which is something substantial. The 
the utilization of a mind-altering substance to alleviate a certain discomfort or pain in my life is the same gesture, the same posture as an individual who demands certainty from a world because the uncertainty is too overwhelming. And this was the position of most of the world, of nearly the entirety of the world, prior to Avram Avinu's decision to shatter those idols. There was an overwhelming nature of the Mabul, there was the trauma of the flood, there was the trauma of Migdal Bavil, there was the trauma of Cain and Hevel, there was the trauma of the Marishan being kicked out of Gan Eden. In the face of all of these traumas, there was the trauma of Noah surviving and losing himself in drunkenness. In response to all of these traumas, which open up the abysmal depths of the unknown, the natural desire to create idol idols of measure and sustainability and certainty is all too natural and all too common. What Avram Avinu did was he came to recognize that even though the world has tried to arrest all uncertainty by creating levels and idols of certainty. Nevertheless, there is still a murmuring at the heart of my experience. Avram Avinu continued to question at the heart of all things. Avram Avinu continued to gaze at a world and to realize the discrepancies in the world. He saw a world on fire. He asked the question of who created all of this? Where does this come from? From whence does this emerge? Chaos for the sake of chaos is clearly not what this is all about. And therefore, there must be a source of the chaos, which already orients me towards searching for something beyond my graspability. And these questions rested and, and rustled at the heart of Avram until he was so so uncomfortable that he decided to reveal to the world that these idols, these measured certain things need to be destroyed in order for us to re-enter into the realm of what it means to be a human being. Yes, it might be uncertain. Yes, it might be frightening. Yes, it might mean a person has to be thrown into a kivshan ha'ish with an absolute faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But in order to embrace a world of recovery, a world of building, behevaram, behivaram, that Avram Avinu represents the transition out of chaos into a world of recovery, that brings with it the necessary difficulty of leaning into the uncertainty and facing the uncertainty. And that is where the impulse emerges for Avram Avinu to shatter idols, to reintroduce into the world that uncertainty, that instability that is by definition something that needs to be processed in order for a person to cultivate what it means to be a vulnerable human being, a person who needs to cultivate faith or belief in a power greater than oneself, rather than knowledge and certainty in an idol that is lower than oneself. And with this impulse to shatter the idols and to re-embrace the invisibility of all things, which all of the uncertainty that comes along with it, comes the clarion call that he receives from his higher power. Because once Avram Avinu decides that I am not going to live in a world of false certainty or immediate gratification, which suspends and erases all of my difficulties for but a moment, like any substance does, Avram Avinu was willing to lean into the discomfort and embrace a world of uncertainty and embrace a faith of unknowability and embrace a belief of something that can't be proven. And immediately, immediately he hears the voice of his higher power saying Lech lecha, go for yourself wander for yourself leave your situatedness leave your habituation leave your perceptions and transition go inwards listen to the inner questioning that rests at your heart ignore the all too human desire for certainty that every other idol worshiper or substance abuser uses in that motivation towards a sustainable ground and embrace the unknowability of it because we see that Avram Avinu is not tasked with arriving at a particular destination Avram Avinu is not told where Eretz Yisrael is Avram Avinu is not told where he is going to find comfort. Rather, he is emboldened with the belief that wherever I wander, that is where I will find you, Rabbi Nishleilam. I might not be able to find certainty. I might not be able to find that groundedness. I might not be able to find that absolute clarification of what is what, what is up, what is down, what is left, and what is right. But what I am certain of, says Avram Avinu, is that wherever I find myself, and however I find myself, and whatever I find myself in, I will find access to that secret of emuna. Emuna is an immeasurable thing. Faith is something that cannot be measured. It cannot be weighed. It cannot be, it cannot be measured in terms terms of its height or its width. It is something that in the end of the day, if I can explain it to you with words, then I'm not explaining it to you properly because it's something that I can't explain in words. Faith is something that transcends language. It shatters the desire to codify and to wrap things up very neatly in organized and manageable ideas. And it reopens us to the silence that rests at the heart of all speech, that mumbling doubt that rests at the heart of certainty, which can do one of two things for a person. It can drive them mad, craving after those idols 
riddles of the past, which offered certainty to simply alleviate the pain of not knowing, or it can embark a person upon a new path of wonder, of wondering, of expectation, of anticipation, of wandering without destination, of walking. As Rabbi Nachman said, Kol makom shani olech, ani olech Israel, wherever I walk, I'm walking to the land of Israel, because when I take away the notion of a destination of certainty and measure that is eventually going to answer up all of my questions, I allow myself to be suspended in the airiness and the instability of the journey. And then I come to realize that every step is the destination. Every step of this process is the destination. Wherever I walk is where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be found. Wherever I am is where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be found. And in that very relinquishment on the all too human desire for certainty, what we encounter is the new secret of uncertainty. And in the moments of uncertainty, all we can do is reorient ourselves towards faith, reorient ourselves towards the embrace of not knowing and the willingness to find comfort within the heart of unknowing. This is the secret of Avram Avinu. You will know my faith by asking the question of what? There is a perpetual questioning and mumbling and murmuring at the heart of Avram Avinu, but it's a murmuring that does not negate the simplicity of faith that accepts the unknowability of all things, but rather it is a murmuring that adds to my faith. I am able to talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I am able to demand that things begin to work out. I am able to expect even that things begin to work out. Kolzman, as long as they are seen within the realm of my general framework of acceptance. And when a person can enter into the path of the acceptance of not having certainty, yet the belief that I can cultivate for myself my own form of certainty, which is more certain than external certainty, because external certainty is contingent, and it's based on facts, and it's based on evidence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are the idolatrous forms of certainty, but the inner certainty, that inner nakuda, that inner point of my own resolve, that I have chosen this path of faith, and that is where my certainty comes from, so at that point, all of the uncertainty and all of the unprovability of my relationship Relationship with my higher power or my improvability of where I'm going or what I'm walking towards, it all becomes part and parcel of a singular gesture of faith. The secret of Avraham Ha'ivri, the secret of Avraham Avinu who is capable of standing on the opposite side of reality. Everybody else lives with their certainties. Avraham Avinu was willing to traverse the void and embrace the secret of uncertainty, to embrace that secret of the darkness that descends upon Abraham in the Brisbane Abbasarim, which teaches him how he knows the unfolding history of his children by engaging in that terrifying, frightful encounter with the vultures that hover overhead in the valley of separation and destruction, it's specifically there that we are capable of cultivating the true faith in chesed and in rachamim. Avram Avinu understood that if I look at the world and I try and determine based on the history of the world that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be compassionate and merciful, I am going to fail and I am not going to believe in it because that's not what has happened thus far. But when I believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's compassion and rachamim and mercy beyond evidence, at that point I gain access to a secret secret stream that irrigates the mind at every moment that allows me to tap into that chavira kakaspa, that whiteness that is as sweet, as pleasant as chesed, that exists at the heart of every encounter. This is the power of Avraham, the power to find my home wherever I am, but that is dependent upon the relinquishment of feeling at home. When I relinquish the necessity of being grounded, I find the capacity to ground myself in groundlessness and to wander without destination and to be aware that every step of this process is one one that brings me closer and closer to the Rabbi Nishleilam. This is the story of Avraham. This is the story of Lech Lecha. This is the story of recovery, the transition away from certainty into the embrace of uncertainty, but not an uncertainty that destroys any possibility of planning. There is planning, there is engagement, but every ounce of engagement and every ounce of planning needs to hold very carefully and gently within itself the secret that I don't know anything at all. I don't have any control at all. And Be'ezra Sashem, when we can tap into that faith of Avraham, we can also relinquish our all too natural, all too common desire for something that is substantial, for some substance to stand upon, and we can open ourselves up to faith, to something intangible, to the breath that animates all things, and we can connect to that which is beautiful in ourselves, that which is beautiful in the world, and that which is beautiful within our higher power, and we can be zoichet to truly be like Avraham, to wander towards a promised land, even though we don't know how, when, or if we will ever arrive there, but Ezra Sashem.